Hello again, I am Blunty, and while this may bear a striking resemblance to the controller for Nintendo's new Wii U console, especially the version that comes wrapped in a shiny white jacket instead of the dark cloak of blackness mine is shrouded with, but it's actually a bargain basement Android tablet that has been specifically designed with gaming, and in particular classic console game emulation, in mind. It goes by the rather simple name of the JXDS7100, which may be a boring label, but at least it's not as silly as some of the marketing machine monikers given to too many otherwise not silly at all Android phones these days. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Anyway, so let's take a look at this little beastie. It's powered by an ARM Cortex A9 CPU clocked at 1 GHz and a Mali 400 GPU, so it's got a decent amount of grunt for an Android tablet at the cheap end of town. It's got 8 GB of RAM on board and a slot for a micro SD card to expand that with. The screen is okay, but you can't really find awesome from here with a map and a compass. Resolution is just 800 by 480 and on a 7 inch screen that can get a bit chunky. The viewing angles are a bit narrow and smooth color gradations will band up and block up, but given that the kinds of old school games you'll be emulating don't really use smooth color gradations and run at a native resolution lower than this screen is capable of anyway, it's really not the handicap it normally would be. It's got Wi-Fi of course, front and back cameras, which are both predictably atrocious and unusable for any practical purpose outside of ugly video chat or something. The built-in speakers on the bottom corners of the face are okay and push out satisfactory volume, but of course there's also a headphone jack for when you're playing on public transport, hint hint, use headphones when you're on public transport, or just want a richer sound. The box claims the battery will get you through about 5 hours of web surfing, watching videos or listening to music, but it will drop from that noticeably when playing games and it will vary depending on how well the emulator is encoded and what the particular game is asking of the hardware so don't ask me for numbers there. The skinned version of Android and the launcher it comes with as stock are really quite awful and also full of bloatware and Chinese crud that I'll never ever ever use so I rooted it and reflashed it with a nice clean minimal ROM that some clever little bugger put together for it called Gabo ROM. That's G-A-B-O-R-O-M if you're Googling for it. You've got a thumb pad, you've got a little analog nub, you've got four face buttons, and you've got a select and start button. There are no shoulder buttons, and there is no second analog nub, which makes it a bit more limited than the Xperia Play with its proper gamepad designed by PlayStation engineers. But what buttons that are missing can be substituted by touchscreen overlays in most emulators. You can also usually hide the controls you don't need and only show the ones that you can't map to the physical buttons. It's a workaround, but it works. In any case, even though it can run anything up to Nintendo 64 games pretty damn smoothly and PlayStation 1 games with a bit of chugging depending on how much 3D they're throwing around, given the capabilities of the device and its button layout, it's much more at home with everything else from the Atari 2600 to the Super Nintendo. The analog nub isn't really analog by the way, well it is on a hardware level, but apparently this version of Android didn't actually support this type of analog input, but it works fine in digital mode and is actually more comfortable than the thumb pad while gaming, so that's the one I tend to use. Unfortunately, it's stuck with Android 2.3.4, which isn't exactly bug free, and these days will limit you on what you can install from the store. Uh, like many popular and useful apps like Google Plus and Instagram, for instance, won't install, and many of Android's own native games just won't install on a version of Android this old. There's also a bit of a firmware bug where the screen will randomly turn on from standby mode, so when you're not using it, you pretty much have to shut it off completely or you'll burn away your battery while it's in your bag or whatever. There is a bit of a workaround that involves turning off the auto screen orientation and turning off Wi-Fi that seems to work kind of most of the time, but you know. There are also some other bugs on this Android version too, so really it's not that great as a day-to-day -day Android tablet, but quite nice as an emulation station to get some old school gaming on the go going. And what is even more awesome is that the device also features a HDMI out port, which means you can also get your classic gaming done up on the big screen. 
Something else to be aware of, there are two versions of this unit. One is cheaper and has a resistive screen. The other costs you a bit more and has a capacitive screen. Do not cheap out and go for the slightly less expensive model with a resistive screen. Resistive touchscreens are crap. You'll also lose stuff like multi-touch and when you're dealing with on-screen gaming controls, that's kind of vital. While the capacitive one will register up to five simultaneous touches. So all in all, it's a bit buggy in places, the screen is a bit naff, and the interface look, feel and performance is just awful until you root it and reflash it. But once you clear the room of noobs and get your nerd kung fu all over its ass, it's actually a pretty sweet little machine for old school gaming. The controls actually feel quite nice, solid, reliable, with good tactile feedback, good response, and an all round decent feel. Not too spongy, not too clicky, I quite like them. The layout is nice, the form factor is great, and the size is pretty much perfect for its purpose in life. I wish the battery would last longer, but I could say that about pretty much any phone or pretty much any tablet out there, but you should get a few hours worth of solid gaming between charges. And of course it'll also do pretty well to more ordinary Android tablet duties like web surfing, watching online video, listening to music, throwing some posts on Twitter or Tumblr or whatever, but the screen's low resolution mean reading ebooks or comics is not what you'd call ideal. There are better options for general purpose Android tablets out there for about the same money, but if your priority is gaming, you just can't go past physical controls. They are just better for this type of gaming. The S7100 presents a very tempting piece of fruit in this regard. So there you go, that's the JXDS7100. I got mine from a site called Deal Extreme for about 160 Aussie dollars, but have a Google around for the best current pricing if you want one. Uh, so yeah, I'm Blunty, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.